Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Let us worship God. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy are those who walk in God's ways and seek the Lord with their whole heart. The Lord be with you. Come, Holy One, teach us your ways, lead us in your paths, guide us on our journey, speak to us your word of life. You offer us direction, wholeness, when we hear your voice and follow. You bless us with your love, shower us with your grace, help us grow in faith, we seek you, O oh God, with all our hearts. Be near us this day. Amen.
If we claim we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of mercy, you call us to make peace with one another, but we choose conflict in the world, in the hearts, and in our homes, or settle for reconciliation that's just not true or just. Forgive our warring ways, O oh Lord, and teach us your way of peace, that we may be signs of your reign of justice and love. Church, whether you came here unbelieving, doubting your faith, whether you feel really close to God right now, whether you have already gotten in a fight this morning with someone in your household, whether you were excited to be here, God loves you. There's nothing you can do to change that. So, believe in the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Well, good morning, church. It's good to see you. How about that service last week where 29 eighth graders became members? And for those of you who were here, one of our eighth graders just dumped the whole thing in here and splashed it on himself. 
So I hoped you remembered your baptism, whether you were sprinkled or dunked. <laughs> there are friendship pads um, on this, the inside of your pew. If you will pass those so that we know you were here, so that you get brownie points in heaven. But actually, so we can reach out to you if you are new or if you have been here for a while. And if you are joining us online, there is a QR code that you can click or something, and you can tell us you were here as well. I have a few announcements this morning. I'll start with today and move forward. So we have some incredible Sunday school classes, and you can find those opportunities in your bulletin. There is coffee and conversation with parents of youth and also young adults. We have a bunch of seniors in college and the coffee and conversation, you will be helping us write to them and put together care packages for them. So room 10, we would love to have you. Uh, we have some more offerings. Lucas Maburu is back. Scott Baker is back for young families. So we encourage you to pick one of those. The children's and youth choirs will not have rehearsals today in the afternoon. Um, the bulletin says we do, but we do not. So don't do that, okay? <laughs> the annual congregational meeting, which is sort of like an SNL skit where Donovan gets to really show his humor, that is on February 26th in Fellowship Hall during the Sunday school hour to quote Donovan, life-changing. <laughs> and with that, I am going to introduce two wonderful members of our youth council who will be doing our moment for mission this morning. I almost forgot Super Bowl of Caring. So if you brought cans, or dry goods for Second Harvest, go ahead and meet us in the parlor afterward. We also have um, a chip reader. If you have a credit card or if you brought cash, all the donations this morning go to Second Harvest. So be sure to donate. And now, Youth Council, you may come up. We're bored. Hey, you. Yeah, you. <laughs> Whose voice is that? I'm scared. You look pretty bored over there. You know what you could use? Something radical, something cool, something extreme. And that's why you should participate in the annual churchwide basketball jamboree. <laughs> the annual basketball jamboree, what's that? The annual basketball jamboree is on Sunday, February 26, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. This fun, intergenerational event is where people from Westminster form basketball teams and play each other in a tournament-style competition. It's open to the whole family and the entire congregation. That sounds fun, but what if I'm not very good at basketball? Don't worry about not being good at basketball. Donovan Drake plays horribly every year. <laughs> Seems to have a good time. This is a church event. The basketball teams of all ages and abilities are welcome. Awesome. Let's go play in the jamboree right now. Hold on there, eager beavers. First, you got to learn how to register. Let's talk about team captains. Whoa, team captains? That sounds like a pirate. Kind of, yeah. <clears throat> a team captain gathers a team of at least five players. The team can be made of friends, families, neighbors, whoever. The team captain must be affiliated with Westminster, but their teammates do not have to be. The team captain will be the one responsible to register their entire team online. Registration deadlines for teams is Friday, February 24th at 12 noon. This deadline gives us time to create the best bracket possible. Wow, sounds tubular, dude. It is tubular. Oh, and don't forget about the knockout contest at halftime that anyone is welcome to participate in. But wait, I'm new to town and I don't know a lot of people. I also don't have time for, to form a team, but I really want to play. What do I do? Oh, that's easy. Margie Quinn, raise your hand, Margie. 
Contact her directly and she will place you on an existing team or help you recruit a team. What if a team is made up of fifth graders or younger? Is that okay? Yes. Just let us know when you register. We will do our best to position you in the bracket accordingly. Can my lizard come? My lizard doesn't like to play basketball, but loves to watch. Of course. We love lizards and spectators. If you don't want to play, we'd love for you to come and cheer on our players. Now, let's talk about suggested donations. If you'd like to spectate, there's a suggested $5 donation at the door. The suggested donation for team captains is $10, which includes pizza and a drink. Teams captains can give their donations online or at the Jamboree via cash, card, or check made out to Westminster Presbyterian Church. Team captains are only responsible for their own suggested donation, not their teammates. The suggested donation for every player is $10, which includes pizza and a drink also. Although your team captain will be registering players on their team, players can also give their donation online or at the Jamboree via cash, card, or check. We will have pizza for $2 a slice, as well as other delicious items. The Jamboree is a fundraiser, and all proceeds will go to the youth ministry. But wait, there's more! <laughs> this year, the youth ministry is also partnering with Souls for Souls, an organization that gives shoes and clothing to people in crisis situations. If you have new or gently used shoes or articles of clothing that you would graciously like to donate, we will accept these items starting February 26th during worship at the Jamboree event and at church up until March 5th. If you, have, if you have any questions about this event and item drive, please reach out to the youth, youth staff. Wow, basketball, pizza, and souls for souls. Sounds like my kind of event. See, See you there. See you there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amazing. Tucker and I practiced that basketball pass many times in the parlor, so I'm proud of us. You didn't drop it. That is all of our announcements this morning. Let us continue to worship God. Will you pray with me? God, when they put scripture together, they desired that it always be read in community. And that is the gift we get hearing your word this morning as a church. Thank you for that offering that we have many thoughts, many ears to hear your word. Amen. So our first scripture this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. Hear the word of God. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. 
If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in God's ways and observing God's commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live loving the Lord your God, obeying God, holding fast to God, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you and to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord.
The Gospel of Matthew has Jesus climbing up a mountain and giving those who have ears to hear a blessing. Is there anyone in here poor in spirit? If so, Jesus is giving you a blessing. Is there anyone in here who hungers and thirsts for the right thing to do? If so, Jesus is giving you a blessing. Is there anyone in here pure of heart? <laughs> I didn't think so, but Jesus, Jesus thinks so, and Jesus is blessing you. Jesus is giving his Sermon on the Mount, and it begins by warming the congregation, uh, people who are filled with mourning and meekness, people who have been persecuted, and all these people add up to the body of Christ. It is the beginning of the church, the church. And Jesus gives them a blessing, and suddenly the power comes on. You are the light of the world, he tells them. And don't you for a moment forget that. Let your light shine so that all may see your good works, giving glory to your Father in heaven, that they all may see your good works. When Jesus speaks of good works, what does he have in mind? Well, Matthew 5, 21 through 25 for a beginning. So hear the word of God. You have heard it said that it was said during ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you'll be liable to judgment, and if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to counsel, and if you say you fool, you'll be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar. Go, first be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. And this is the word of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus takes the law of Moses and cranks it up. You have heard it said you shall not murder, but I say to you, cranking it up, cranking it up, if you are angry at your brother or sister, you shall be liable to judgment. You have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery, cranking it up. But I say to you, anyone who looks at another with lust in their heart, cranking it up. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not even resist an evildoer. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, cranking it up. Cranking it up, make your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. They. Who are they? Well, they could be you. They could be me. I gave thanks for they the other night. I saw the light of good works of all places on the news. A reporter was with a family deep in a basement of was what, what was once a home in a city that was once a city in Ukraine. The room was dark except for the camera light and the light of a woman who welcomed a reporter into her home. Her basement. Welcome to men. And then asked him to stay for dinner. The woman and the family, they had nothing. The reporter said, No, 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 you have so little, I can't sit, eat, she said. What made the news that night was not the insanity of war 
No, what made the news is when you crank it up. You crank up the love, you crank up the hospitality. Wow. Oh, you have heard it said that we live in a survival of the fittest world. You have heard it said, weaponize your bomb shelter and hope to live. But I say to you, you are the light of the world. You give your life to a stranger. Show the world what you're made of. Show the world that you're not afraid. Show the world Emmanuel, God with us. And in that Ukrainian woman, I saw the true light that entered into the world. I saw the sacrifice of a cross and I gave thanks to my Father in heaven. You have heard it said, 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 you all know the old news, says Jesus. You're immersed in it. Watch out, because God is doing a new thing. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Watch out. Because when light comes into the world, watch out. Because <laughs> when light comes into the world, those who see it, some, they'll run for the shadows, hide in the darkness. It's more comfortable there with the things that we know, the things that we've already made up our minds about, the place where God is up to the old things. We received a call at the church this past week to see if we might have a photograph of one of our former associate pastors, Lucius DeBose. It was a church down in South Carolina that was calling and asking for the photograph. I wouldn't know where to begin to look for a photograph of an associate pastor. Now, a senior pastor, we have those files. Those are quite full and thick. In fact, I have a file full of 8 by 10 glossies, signed and suitable for framing. <laughs> They'll look good in any foyer or family room. But they weren't asking for my picture or any of the senior pastors. Do you have a photograph of Lucius DeBose? He was an associate pastor at Westminster way back. And, well, we'll have to look. Why do you need a photograph of Lucius? Well, back in 1961, we threw him out of our church, and we want to honor him. You don't honor pastors you throw out of your church. <laughs> we're honoring him because we were wrong about segregation. They threw him out over 60 years ago. 60 years ago, that's a lifetime. I mean, they could have let sleeping dogs lie. You don't have to go there getting your grandchildren all riled up about knowing that grandpa made a mistake. You don't have to do that. But I suppose one Sunday, someone or someones were offering their gift at the altar and they remembered. They remembered that they had something against them. They remembered the anger. They remembered that someone was trying to say, it's time to see the light. No, 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 no. For we have heard it said, you can't have those people in church. We have heard it said they have their place. We have heard it said they aren't even human. We have heard it said they are less. And Lucius got up in the pulpit and preached the word of God that said, but I say to you, Do you have a photograph? Because we need to be reconciled to Lucius. We know he just died. We know we're late. 
but we can't worship again until we're reconciled. And then we can offer our gift to God. Jesus assembled on that mountaintop the beginnings of what one day would be called church. He gave them a blessing and told them to make their light shine so that they may see your good works and give glory to your God in heaven. It was just the beginning, but now we live in days in which they're talking about the end of the church. That's what I've heard. They say there are people who are trying to turn it around. In fact, I read in the New York Times yesterday about a, a group of people who are buying multi-million dollar Super Bowl ads to promote Jesus. You've seen these ads, I'm sure. They're the ones with the taglines that say, he gets us. They're the ones who say, whatever you're facing, Jesus faced it too. He gets us. They're the ones who tell of one who prepared a feast and it was all in his home, but some refused to sit at his table and he was heartbroken because he wanted them all to be filled, not with food and drink, but with compassion. And I have to admit, I agree with every single one of those messages that are aired. A message, I think, to a world that says the church is all about people, keeping people out. No, no. It's a welcoming place. I like the message. But yesterday in the article, I read that some of those who are funding those ads want to remain anonymous. The, the article went on to say that the organization that runs that ad gave money to groups, groups that I have heard, that I have heard said, don't see Jesus as clearly and as rightly as I do. And so after I read the article, I said, cancel the commercial, write them off, for they are against the Jesus that I know because what I've heard said is it's perfectly okay to hate your enemy. I've heard that said. I like that being said. But then there was this man who lived among people who could not get along and said to them, But I say to you, in a couple of weeks, we are going to have that annual meeting. And you do all so well filling that fellowship hall up to vote on elders and trustees and approve budgets. And and you do well in celebrating the life of Westminster, and I thank you for that. And again, this year, there is much to celebrate. But I'm hoping you'll come this year because a session and a few others are beginning a process of discerning where God is leading Westminster in the days ahead. You see, my hunch about the church in this world is that it isn't scared of death. No, we've got death down pretty well. My hunch is about the church in the world is that we're scared of life. Not this church. Life begins with the words. But I say to you,
Please remain standing as we affirm our faith, as we recite the Apostles' Creed found on page 5 in the bulletin. So with the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Will you pray with me? God, it is said in the Gospel of Matthew that before Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, he sat down. He met us where we were, and maybe he was just tired. And God, we are tired. The deaths in Turkey and Syria are incomprehensible. The death of Tyree Nichols, heartbreaking. Even our sordid past as a church who did not show your light, haunting. And yet you love us anyway, and you hope for us anyway, and you sit with us anyway in our sin and in our grief. God, will you help embolden us to follow after your son when he says, come, to be the church beyond Sunday mornings out in the world. For as Anne Lamott says, earth is forgiveness school. And we are trying to be students of that to others and to ourselves. And God, we need your help every day to do just that. We thank you that we get to try together. Amen. Amen. God is so generous with us in offering daily grace, and we get to give back to the church that reminds us of that grace. So let us now give of our time and treasures as we move into a time of offering.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all mercies, we give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and for all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your boundless love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven,
are the light of the world. So go, be the light of the world. Let your good works, the hard works, the sacrificial works shine so that others may give glory to God in heaven. Go, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with us all, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Amen.